In our first story, patients at the Savalugu Nanton Hospital in the northern region share what with dead bodies as a result of inadequate infrastructure. The hospital's morgue is dysfunctional and overcrowded, forcing managers to divide the limited space between the living and the dead. Hospital officials are concerned. The current situation threatens the health and safety of not only patients but staff, but they do have no choice. Joy News Hashmin Mohammed visited the facility and has come through with this report. The facility looks good outside, but you will be disappointed when you get in. The ceiling of the roof is torn, exposing naked wear in some parts of the hospital. Rusty nails can no longer hold family together, leading to severe leakages which destroy patients' files. There is also inadequate space and beds, making children and adults share beds in the walls, whilst others lie on the bare floor. Yakubo al Hassan, who has been using the facility with his children, has been speaking about his experiences. I brought a child here, that was two weeks ago. The child was admitted at the general ward. Over there, the place was so crowded and there were no beds to contain the patients. So my child had to be treated on the bed floor. We stayed here for three days and were discharged. On getting home, I realized that the child was having other skin diseases, which I suspected we contracted from the hospital. So we returned and the child was treated of that disease. So what the lack of space and inadequate beds is the least of their problems. The facility lack toilet and urinal facilities, and patients engage in open defecation. The mock is dysfunctional, and patients are worried about the problem. To push, to ease or take our bath and outside the clinic, or outside the hospital. So you came around five to four, four to five. That time people do not see you. You just do it quickly and go back again. Aside the hospital, in, the, in an unlikely event, there is a death. There is no mortuary where the disease is normally sent to. The patients have to be with the body until the family come to clean the body. The stench and the frustration in patients, in, in patients watching this is not easy. So we are pleading with God. Management of the hospital have attributed the challenges of the hospital to the inability of government to take any rehabilitation and expansion works before upgrading from the health center to a municipal hospital to serve a growing population which is now at 193,283. Dr. Samson Abankwa is the medical superintendent of the hospital. Of improvement in terms of the facilities at the hospital. So though it is functioning as a hospital, all the facilities, or most of the facilities that are here were meant for the health center. So one major problem that we are facing is the problem of congestion. Anywhere you go, you see that people are making do with very small spaces. For example, if you go to the lab, the whole place is so congested. And uh, at times when they have to handle steam and uh, sputum and things, it's virtually impossible because it's just a small and close place that they are managing. You go to the accident and emergency, it is sharing the same facility with the CSSD where they sterilize our items. So when they finish treatment and you have dead body just by the Member of Parliament for Savlugu, Abdul Somet Mohamed Gunu, who taught the facility with the district chief executive, Hajia Aisha Tusedu, tells Joy News he is overwhelmed by the state of the hospital. Last year, uh, and then when the parliamentary select committee visited the hospital, they were disappointed. 
Because this, this is year, more this year, of yeah, this, this year. year. So I think this is uh, just a clinic. Yes. I cannot describe this yes, uh, yes. as a hospital. Yes, yes. So we need the government prioritized the Savlugonant on municipal hospital by giving it a facelift. Patients visiting this particular facility will continue to share beds in walls and also sit with cops. For Joy News, Hashmin Mohammed reports from Savlugonant. The chief executive for the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly, Oseya Sibiyentri, is asking residents of Kumasi to start backyard farming to boost food production. Mr. Osei Inchi says such an initiative would not only augment and give further meaning to government agricultural policies, but also give meaning to the policy for planting for food and jobs. He spoke at the Metropolitan Farmers Day Deba in Kumasi. Prince Apia reports. This year's Farmer's Day will be climaxed in Kumase to cap a week of activities. For this reason, Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies in some parts of Ashanti region decided to go ahead of the national ceremony. In Kumase, the spotlight was on vegetable farmer Ifyasa Poma of Ahumaso, who was a judged best physically challenged farmer. Shamu Farms and Enterprise at Ahujo won the overall best farmer for the metropolis. Farmer representative John Yaboa challenges government to its promises on agriculture. I was talking about uh, the credit in kind facilities for the large farmers. For the previous years, government gave 10 sheep to a, a certain farmer to rear for two years. And two years later, he came for another 10 and gave it to another farmer. This increased the total number of uh, lacks of farming and it helps a lot. So we appeal to the government to, or we are reminding the government to come back and help such a fruitful incentives like that. And the president of today has promised one disease, one factory. We appreciate for that, but we are looking forward to see its establishment, which is not be, it shouldn't be a political talk. That is what I'm talking about. And this will create a lot of employment to our youth. Mr. Say Sibiyanchi, however, notes about 90% of land in Kumase is now covered by residential or commercial activities. Mr. Say Sibi, however, notes about 90% of land in Kumase is now covered by residential or commercial structures. He says backyard farming is a good option for residents. Uh, people were amazed even to hear that Kumasi has emerged as the number one in the whole of Ashanti region towards the, because of the cultivation of spring onions. The farms are not far from where they are living, so it's an opportunity. So that is why I based upon it and encouraged and invited all the youth within the metropolis to get into farming, not looking far for land, but looking within their own corridors. We are not limiting it only to that of the spring onions, but to vegetables in general. And we are also adding up flowers because Kumasi has got a num number of rivers. We have more than seven rivers. And because of that, we have a lot of areas that are suitable for the cultivation of flowers, suitable for the cultivation of vegetables. And when it comes to the expert knowledge, we also have it. Crop research is here in Kumasi, soil research is here in Kumasi, KNUST is also there to provide all the needed technical support. Prince Apia, reporting. Well, let's turn our attention to some education. And um, the president of the Ghana Baptist University College says the advent of private tertiary institutions is contributing to the improvement of the quality of education in the country. Dr. NSD Dujemfi observes significant pressure has been taken off public universities which hitherto were compelled to increase their numbers of admissions in the face of limited resources. He spoke to Love News at the college's graduation. We bring a report by Thomas Pamford. Dr. Edu Jemfi noted overcrowding remains a major challenge at all levels of education. Where they have 800 students with one lecturer teaching them. You come to our private universities, that is not the, the, the case. Sometimes 20, 30, 40 students with a lecturer. You see, so the attention is there, and the assessment procedures are also there. And so I said it's unfortunate because NAB is the body that, that monitors 
our standards, and we have that. And go, go to university, private, private universities. We have quality assurance units that make sure that our, 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 our things are to standard. Dr. Adujemfi also dismisses suggestion private universities are taking advantage of deficits in public education to charge exorbitant fees. And again, saying that we charge abnormal uh, fees for abnormal profits, that is also not true. My brother, as I speak, last night we had university council meeting and we're thinking how do we run a university when you charge a student 1,500? Education is expensive. So it is not true that we are charging high school fees. That is not true at all. And that is why I think we are also suffering because we, we can increase fees knowing that students cannot afford to come. Meanwhile, the National Innovation Plan is encouraging universities to prepare students adequately to capitalize on government's employment creation initiative. John Kuma is chief executive. The focus right now is to prepare students who go out there and create business opportunities for themselves and for their community. So we came to advise them to take the issue of entrepreneurship seriously, issues of innovation seriously, and going into the world, getting your certificate is one thing, but being successful is another thing. So they will need other skills beyond the book knowledge. Thomas Pankford reporting to join us. The National Institute for Mathematical Sciences is emphasizing communication technology as a tool for the realization of government development initiatives. The Director for Scientific and Technical Computing, Dr. Peter Amwaku Yerinchi, says scientific modeling and other applications were important for greater efficiency and competitiveness. Dr. Amwaku Yerinchi spoke at the opening of an international conference on scientific computing and industrial modeling in Kumasi. Lava Firm's Kwisi Debra reports. He says it's in government's interest to use scientific and evidence-based experiences for industrial growth. If you wanted to find out how to manage your traffic lights, then you may need to find out all the interconnections that are um, connected to that particular traffic junction. To be able to know what vehicle, for example, should pass it within what time, you need to calculate them within a very short period. That type of calculations to allow traffic flow will require scientific computing. You need to do this heavily computational, you need this heavily computational effort to allow you to do that type of um, calculation. For example, if government decides that, or a district decides that they want to locate, uh, or they say they want to build a, a, a factory, which particular place within that district should they um, decide to build it? You need to calculate them, you need to do what we call um, location problem, you need to design a location but to decide which particular place should the, should the factory be sited so that majority of people will benefit from from that particular site yes the national institute for mathematical sciences is committed to ghana's socio-economic development through application of science and technology it's under the theme scientific computing and industrial modeling a tool for accelerating innovation the three-day conference brings together manufacturers business administrators researchers and science students Professor Evans Adey is with the chemistry department, KNUST. Admissions has been biannual and expecting 20 graduates with nine PhDs by the end of the, of the project. Because most of our, our smart students uh, go out and do their postgraduate just like I did. So the hope is that you'll be able to attract with a little bit of funding some of our smart students will go out to help us in, in solving problems that is, uh, uh, will help to the rapid development of our, our country. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Well, we'll look at uh, the next story. Quite interesting. This is because the Deputy Upper West Regional Minister, Amidu Chenia Isahako, is worried over the staggering amount of money used to organize funerals to the detriment of education of children in the region. He says it is time for the people to channel their finances into the development of the education of their wards. Mr. Isahaku was addressing participants at the Nandom District Forum. Here's Rafik Salam's report. The Nandom District Development Forum 
organized by the Nondom District Assembly, is part of efforts of the Assembly to deepen the local governance process to have all citizenry of Nandom to participate in the determination of the future outlook of the area. The overall vision of the Nondom District is to champion an exclusive nonpartisan development through conscious exploitation of well-endowed human and God-given resources within framework of mutual trust and existence of economic opportunities for all the people. Opening the forum, Deputy Upper West Region Minister Amidu Chine Isaku commended the district for their performance in the district league table. Last year, out of the 216 districts, you came, you were 53rd, and this year you have moved from that place to seventh position. It is a great achievement, but this achievement comes with a lot of responsibility. You know, when you make progress, defending that progress becomes a huge responsibility. So all the people in the London district have a very huge responsibility to protect this legacy that you took yesterday, to ensure that you either remain on the seventh position or you move forward, but you don't go back. He called on the participants to attach serious importance to the forum so as to develop strategies to lift the people from the poverty cogmire they are wallowing in. Development starts with the individual. If individual will ever get developed, then certainly you can be sure that our communities will develop. Now we have to have productive investment. In Upper West, when somebody dies, they keep the body for several days, several weeks, several months, so that we can mobilize money and go and do the funeral. Sometimes at the expense of the education of our children. We need to do productive investment. We need to put our resources where the returns will bring development, where the returns will guarantee a better future for our children. Sometimes we have relatives who go through hell before they die. And we don't go to their aid, but when they die, we go for loans. We mobilize all kinds of resources to do their funerals. I think that as Africa, we need to move beyond that. We need to look at productive investment, invest in ventures that will grow our communities, that will grow our district, that will grow our region, and ultimately that will grow our country. This chief executive for Nandom, Ansel Nantidius Akung disclosed the forum will center on eight thematic areas which include agriculture and rural development, women in development initiative, infrastructure planning, education planning to overcome low enrollment in poor BC results. Mr. Ansel Nant expressed concern over the poor performance of candidates in the BC for the past four years, urging the participants to proffer ways to reverse the trend. In 2014, the average result for the district was 12%. In 2015, it was 13%. And in 2016, it was 21%. 2017, 30%. This is not the kinds of statistics that Nandom used to record. So it is a very big challenge. It will take all of us collectively to address this lacuna. And I call on all of you here, parents, especially the chiefs, mothers, development partners, to rally around for us to change this bizarre, negative situation. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam, Nando. The latest news update we have. We have a lot more news. We'll be reviewing the newspapers. We also look at stories posted, especially on myjoinline.com and other um, online portals. But uh, please make sure that you get interactive this morning uh, because we are with you as well as uh, you give us a lot more of your interactivity and your messages on Facebook, join news on TV. We stream live there. And we also have a channel on YouTube, My Online TV. Please watch us live. We'll be so much uh, grateful. But um, we have to take a break. When we come back, we'll do a review of the newspapers. And then we'll, we'll come back with some potential sports stories. Because you know that uh, Manchester United won against Watford um, yesterday evening. And it was a good one for the Manchester United players, supporters, as well as the coach Jose Mourinho. But don't worry. We'll give you a lot more of that as uh, we have the sports team in the studio. But we'll have to take a break. When we come back, we'll do the reviews. Just stay on.